Would you like to know why men procrastinate so much? Tune in to the next broadcast of Wisdom for Living, and when we're going to open that up for you, give you those answers. Welcome to Wisdom for Living with Greg Moore. Join with Greg as he shares truth from the Word of God that will help you grow in wisdom and successfully navigate a balanced life with family, marriage, finances, and relationships. And now, here's Greg. I want to welcome you again to Wisdom for Living. Uh, We're sharing another broadcast on hearing God clearly. Man, these, these times have been just special. God's been bringing us revelation. Uh, it's helping us to be equipped to have confidence in hearing God, to know that you can hear Him, you can hear His voice. Uh, you don't have to guess about these things. You don't have to depend on someone else to hear from God for you. Several years ago, there was a, a movement that started off pure, was called the Shepherding Movement, and, and they focused on discipleship, but it got off when they started when they started requiring the leaders of the of the of these churches started requiring people to come to them and ask them permission uh, to marry a certain person, whether they could buy a car, whether they could buy a house. It just got crazy. Uh, you know, we need uh, the fivefold ministry, uh, but we also need to realize we don't need them to hear from God for us. In fact, I'm a teacher in the body of Christ and a pastor, and, and my job is to, is to help equip you in your own ability to hear from God. You can hear God. That's my job, is to help you see that you have your own priesthood uh, as a believer, and you can go to God, and you, and, and you can seek Him about any kind of decision you have. And... He's, he's going to answer you. He, he, you can seek Him and he, he will not disappoint you. The problems have been that we're not, uh, we're not always tuned in to His voice. Uh, we, we're listening, we're pl- placing value on other voices. And, and uh, you know, someone uh, is in a, in a valley of decision that's watching me today uh, regarding uh, a, a marital decision. You're, you're, you've been going with this person and and uh, you know you you want to you you're seeking God about you know Lord is this the right person for me Well let me tell you something if and help you with this okay um, Dating is the discovery process. Uh, you don't decide who you marry, you discover. And what I mean by that is you you date in court uh, so that you get to know the person. Uh, to find out, you know, hey, or do they have godly character? Um, are they compatible with you? Are you attracted to them? Uh, you know, how do they treat people in authority? Um, how do they talk about their exes from Texas? <laughs> Praise God. But the main thing is that you're, you're courting that person uh, to discover that you, that you hear from God. And if you, if you do hear from God, don't tell the other person you heard from God. Let them discover too. Don't don't use the God card to try to manipulate them. And if somebody's using the God card to manipulate you, you need to back off. Or if you feel pressured, again, the voice of God is is patient. It's not it's not pushy. And so someone's in the in the valley of decision about 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 a, a decision regarding marriage. And I want to encourage you: you wait on God. And listen to counsel. Listen to godly counsel. Don't follow your emotions. Uh, follow the Lord and you wait until you know. There's only one thing worse than being lonely. And that's being together and miserable. So uh, you wait on God until you know. When you know, you won't have to ask that, that question. Well, let me tell you funny. Today, this is, uh, this is called Be Careful what you say to your kids. So a seven-year-old girl went to the office with her dad on take your kid to work day. And as they were walking around the office, the young girl started crying and becoming very upset. It became uncontrollably upset. And her father asked what was wrong with her. And being drawn with compassion 
uh, uh, his staff gathered around, all gathered around her to attempt to comfort her and to help her dad. And while the staff was uh, listening intently to attempt to find out what was uh, the problem with the little girl, she finally responded with loud sobbing and said, Daddy, where are all the clowns you said you worked with? <laughs> oh man, you got to be careful what you say to your kids. Amen. So, you know, in our last uh, broadcast, we were talking about how to hear God accurately. And, you know, the Bible says, if you delight yourself in the Lord, He's going to give you the desires of your heart. Psalm 37, 4. In other words, if you'll take the time to, to the process of delighting yourself in the Lord, uh, I shared with you is, you know, is, is you, you spend time with God and you seek Him and you set aside your own preconceived ideas and your own thoughts about, about what you want. And then you have a yes in your heart. God, I'll go anywhere. I'll do anything. If you have a but and a never in the way, you're not going to hear God. And then if you, if you value the character of God that, you, that is revealed in the Word of God, you know, it's, it's always going to be in line with the written Word. It's, uh, he's faithful. He's, uh, he's patient. He's, uh, it's, got, it's full of peace and it's liberty and all those things that we, that we shared and it's love and not selfishness. Then, then when, when you've done all that, you've drilled down the, to the desires or, or the inward knowing that's in your spirit. And you can trust that. Man, I, I'm, I'm encouraging you uh, to go back on my website, gregmore.com, and listen to that, uh, the last broadcast, and, and go over that again because uh, the Lord trusts you. If you've been seeking Him, if you've been, if you've been uh, you know, worshiping Him, if you've been getting counsel about a decision, and you know, I shared with you about that, it was actually a $1.8 million uh, real, real estate decision. And I, I sought the Lord. I didn't know. Uh, I, I wasn't hearing anything from Him. I was really looking for Him to take me by the hand with a prophecy, a dream, a vision, some kind of supernatural confirmation of, of what, what uh, His will was for me. And, I, and I, I didn't receive any of that. I didn't receive a prophetic word. I didn't receive... I didn't, I didn't get a dream. I didn't get a vision. I didn't, an angel didn't get in my car uh, like he did that one time years ago. Um, man, I, and, and I, I got down, I had to make the decision and the elders were depending on me to, to, to share that. And it was like, I was seeking the Lord and I was hearing nothing, zilch, nada. <laughs> and I finally, you know, got to a point, I got desperate. I said, God, I, we've got a meeting tonight with the elders. We've got to let the real estate agent know tomorrow our decision. And you know, I, you, you say, well, that would be an easy decision. Go ahead and sell the land. Yeah, but it's not mine. And I want to make sure God gave it to us. And were we supposed to build on it? Or are we supposed to sell it? I wanted God's will, not mine. And, and the Lord asked me those questions. Have you, have you been seeking me? Uh, have you been spending time in my word uh, to expose yourself to uh, what my word says about the situation? Have you, um, have you, uh, gotten counsel about this? And and all of those answers, I said, yes, Lord, you know I have. And he said, have you heard anything from me about this? And I said, no, Lord, you know I haven't. And and yet he's talking to me right there. And he said, son, when when you're seeking me like that, you're delighting yourself in me. And when you delight yourself in me and you don't hear anything spectacularly or supernaturally, it's because you don't have to. You already have my mind on the matter. He said, go with what you feel like is best in your heart. I said, really? really? I never heard that before. I, I thought you had, for a million eight decision, I thought you had to have some supernatural confirmation. And God said, no, I trust you, son, because you've, you've delighted yourself in me. You've sought me. You've set aside your own will and you're willing to do whatever uh, uh, that you know I want you to do. He said, I've already planted my desire in your heart. You already know what to do. And when you pray and you seek the Lord and you set aside your own desires 
and you spend time in the Word and you get counseled and you haven't heard anything, you've done, you've done the same thing. You, you've gone through the process of delighting yourself in the Lord. And the Lord said in Psalm 37, 4, you delight yourself in the Lord and He'll give you the desires of your heart. You'll discover the desires He's already planted there. And that was so freeing. I, 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 you know, I'm sharing this again today because it's so liberating. It, you can walk in this. And, and what, we, what we're doing, the problem is, the problem is, my brother and sister, is that with people hearing God, is, the, is that unconsciously they value the supernatural way that God can speak above what He's saying. And in other words, you want God to take you by the hand and give you a vision or a dream or have an angel get in your car or something like that. And you know God can do all that or an audible voice or you know something or a fleece or something. But the bottom line is if you've sought the Lord and you're not getting any confirmation, it's because you don't need one. You already have drilled down to the desires He planted in your heart. You can, he trusts you. Listen to me, I'm appealing to you. I'm appealing to you today. He trusts you. He trusts you to make that decision. You need to trust yourself. You need to give yourself permission to, to succeed. Let me say that again. Give yourself permission to succeed. And you follow what, you've, what you have in your heart. That day, I knew, I already knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to sell the property. We sold that property for $1.8 million. We paid $232,000 for it. Plus, we sold three acres off of it for $300,000. So, so we really, we, we, we made $2.1 million on that property. We ended up with, with uh, making $1.8 million off of that property. We, we tithed on it and gave to missionaries and Andrew Womack Ministries and other ministries. Um, we, then we, bought, we, we paid off a $600,000 youth building and then we bought 19 acres out on the highway. When I left that church, we had $2 million of property debt-free because I learned this lesson that I'm sharing with you today that you can trust the desires that God's put in your heart. You can trust that when you seek the Lord and when you lay aside your desires of your flesh, that the only thing that's left is, is either it's that still small voice of either, either an inward knowing, you just know what you want to do. You, you just have a knowing. I, I just want to do this. Or you have a, a, a strong desire in your heart. I, I, I want to do this or I don't want to do that. And do you know that today, the majority of the time, that's the way God leads me. Now, I still seek Him. I still spend time in His Word. I still get counsel about decisions. I still uh, read, I still read the Bible and, and try to get uh, you know, uh, wisdom from that. And, and, but, but if I do those things and I'm not hearing anything specific, I go with what's best in my heart. Nine times out of ten, that's how God leads me. Um, many of you know Andrew Womack and his ministry. Um, and when he, says, when he says he's heard from God, I, I've talked to him personally, and he shared this publicly, that, that a lot of times it's just the way he hears God is, is, the, is what I'm talking to you about right now. He just becomes a living sacrifice God, I'll do anything. I'll go anywhere. Whatever you reveal to me, he seeks the Lord about it. And then if he doesn't hear anything specific, he goes with what's strongest in his heart. I, I can't tell you the number of times, guys, that that has it saved my bacon. I, I used to have terrible confidence or lack of confidence in, in hearing God's voice because I didn't trust the desires that were in my heart. I didn't trust those desires that were in there that God planted there. I didn't trust myself to succeed. And I'm taking the time to share this with you again today because this is liberating. This is, this is how He leads us. This is, this is His voice. This is how to discover His voice. 
His voice to me many times, it's just a strong, you know what? I just don't want to do that. I don't want to go there. Or I really want to go here. I really want to go see this person. Or I really want to do this. And in that want to, see, we confuse that with that selfish. No, it's not. Not if, not if you've taken the time to already cut aside the desires of the flesh and set all that aside. Uh, don't discount, my brother and sister, do not discount the desires that God's put in your heart. And th this is powerful. And this is liberating. And this is how I make decisions today. And do you know, I make good decisions. <laughs> I make really good decisions. Because I trust the Lord in me and I give myself permission to succeed. And then when I make, I, I, you know, the thing is, I shared with you in the last broadcast, you can't miss God if you don't want to. And and I shared with you, you know, you've got to, each of us have, have probably has a cell phone, most of us do. And you can type in an address and that and your smartphone lady will direct you. And and But if you miss a turn, if, if you, or if you know a shortcut yourself and you miss a turn, uh, your smartphone lady is going to redirect you and you're going to get right back on course. Well, the good thing about following God like this, you know, see, the more of His Word that I know, then the more I know that my desires are in line. And I've already shared that with you. But, but um, the, the more I learn to follow God like this and the more confidence I have that I'm hearing from Him, then I'm praying and I'm seeking God. And, and so then I, I go with what, I, if I haven't heard anything supernatural or spectacular, then what I do is I just step out on what I know and, and step out on what I want to do most. And 1 John 2.20, we have an unction from the Holy One and we know all things. We have a witness in us that we're children of God. We also have a, we'll have a witness about what we're to do. You're to, you're to connect with this person or not connect with that person. Uh, maybe there's somebody in your life, I'm speaking to someone today, that there's, there's someone in your life that's not good for you. And, and, and yeah, you can love them and you can treat them with respect, but that's not somebody that's supposed to be in your inner circle. It's going to take you down the wrong road. And you need, you need to hang out with people who are challenging you and are walking with the Lord, not just with some fun-loving person but that, that is going the wrong direction. You need to trust God with that. But So I'm making a decision in my life about a relationship or, or you know, do I, do I uh, connect with a ministry or uh, do, do I give to a ministry or do I, you know, what do, I, do I do something in my ministry or my business or do I hire somebody or not? And, you know, I, so many times I'm seeking the Lord I set my own desires aside. I spend time with the Lord. I get counsel. And then, you know what I do? I check what's in my heart. What, what's that desire? What do, I, what, what, do I, what do I know in my knower? Or, or what do I want to do or what don't I want to do? And, and I, I make that decision. And when I make that decision, then remember all the paths of wisdom or peace Peace is your safety net. Not a, not a, a, a prophetic word, not a, that sometimes can become pathetic words. <laughs> not not a, a vision or a dream. My sa Even if I get a vision or a dream or, 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 a, or an angel talks to me or a prophetic word, I'm I still all the paths of wisdom are peace. So I, I have peace as a safety net. So if I'm, if I make that decision, First of all, I'll make it in my heart and then I'll measure the peace I have in my heart. Then I start, I commit to it and I start to walk it out and I follow peace. If I lose peace, then I just go back to where I was. See, it, it, you can't lose, guys. You can't miss the will of God if you don't want to. If you live like this, I'm telling you, you're going you're gonna, to, man, you're going to live so peaceful and you're going to have so much joy in your life and you're going to be a good leader that people will follow you'll be a lot more decisive you'll stop second guessing all of your decisions you know you'll, you'll stop depending on other people 
for what, what they're telling you you ought to do. Now look, you, you should get counsel and you should listen to other people. But I'm not depending on them. I'm not depending on their counsel. I'm not depending uh, on you know their opinion, whether they agree with me or not. I, I'm listening to the Lord and I'm seeking Him. I, what I'm sharing with you today, um, it wasn't what I planned to share with you. Uh, what I'm sharing with you today is, is I'm unpacking for you how I live, how I make decisions. And, and I've been, look, look, I'm not a novice. You know, I'm not, I'm not old, but I'm not young. And, and I've been walking with the Lord for a number of years since uh, 1976. I, I was born again in 1973. And since 1976, I've been following God. And the things that I'm sharing with you, I've learned and now, and I'm telling you that this works for me. This, this produces fruit in my life. I make good decisions. I, I, uh, I'm confident, not arrogant. I'm confident. And then I know the reason I can be confident and not fear that I'm going to miss God is because I'm seeking Him. I'm laying aside my own personal uh, flesh desires. I'm, I have a yes in my heart. I'll get counsel. I spend time in His Word. And if I don't get anything supernatural or spectacular, then what I do is I go back to what I know or what I desire to do. And I, I commit to it. And when I commit to it, then I, I, I have peace as my safety net. I, I measure the peace that I have as I walk, I walk that path out. And sometimes I commit to something and I, I step out and I start walking in it. And, and then I see that, well, wait a minute. Uh, I thought it was going to mean this, but I don't have peace there, so I'm, I make a turn. And, and I go and I have peace there and I follow peace. And peace will, and the peace and the Word of God will lead me right into victory and right into success and, and right into blessing. Man, this is so powerful, guys. And it's so liberating. It's like, I, I, I'm... So free because I used to be so fearful that I was going to miss God. I was afraid to make a decision. I was afraid to pull the trigger. Ladies, do you, do you want to know why your husbands procrastinate so much? Tune into tomorrow's broadcast and I'll tell you. <laughs> no, they procrastinate because the, our number one fear is shame. Or, or failure. And it's really, really shame. It's, it's, uh, or, and, and, and the fear of failure and the shame that's associated with that. And your number one fear, ladies, is isolation. And so many times you're tempted to nag us into obedience and moving in an area. Well, that just causes us to isolate. And so, Look, the reason, the reason I used to be afraid to make decisions and I procrastinated because I wanted to make the right one. And I was fearful if I stepped out, I would, I would make the wrong one. And today, I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm a free leader today because I've, I've, I apply and I live by the, the, the principles that I'm sharing with you today. I trust, I trust the Lord in me. And I trust me to make good decisions. And then, and then, you know, when I make that decision and I step out, I follow peace. And I follow His Word. And I listen to counsel. I'm a submitted person. I, I'm, I'm, I walk in humility. And, and I, I make good decisions. And, and listen, guys, you can make good decisions too. You really can. You can hear from God. And I used to think hearing from God meant some audible voice, some spectacular thing that was happening. I was just like Elijah. I was waiting for the thunder and the fire show and the, and, and the ice and the wind and everything else. And God said, no, it's a still small voice. And that still small voice, I didn't know what that meant. I know what it means now. The still small voice, it comes in the form of either an inward knowing, I just know what I know that I know, or it comes in the form of a strong desire either an anti-desire, I don't want to do this, or a strong desire to do something. That's the voice of God, guys. 
You, you've experienced that. You know, they used to call it women's intuition only, only because women, more women uh, worked from home or, you know, in the home rather than uh, outside the home and they had more time to hear, listen to God. I, I, I speak over you today. The grace to hear God accurately, to give yourself permission to succeed, to trust that, that, that desire that He planted in your heart once you seek Him, that's His voice. You can hear Him accurately. You can follow Him and make good decisions. Thanks so much for tuning in today to Wisdom for Living. Today's teaching, Hearing God Clearly, is available in a 10-disc CD or DVD album or on a USB flash drive containing both audio and 4K video. Go to gregmore.com and order your copy today. Discover how to unlock the hidden wisdom of God and make good decisions for your life when you read Greg's brand new book, Walking in Wisdom. In this book, you will learn practical steps to help you reap the benefits of godly wisdom as Pastor Greg shares from over 40 years of walking out biblical truths and principles. Get your copy of Greg's new book by going to gregmore.com today. I want to encourage you to go to my website, gregmore.com. Consider partnering with our ministry. You know, we're helping people to grow and grow in wisdom, uh, grow in Christ-likeness, You know, it's one thing to walk in wisdom, another thing to uh, manifest Jesus in that wisdom. And walk in grace, draw on His ability uh, to be successful in life. How to make good decisions. And if you've been blessed by, uh, by this ministry and by these broadcasts, I encourage you to take a step of faith and, and sow where you've been fed. Thanks so much for considering being a partner with Greg Moore Ministries. God bless you. If you've been blessed by today's teaching, we would like you to consider partnering with Greg Moore Ministries. Your partnership will help expand this broadcast around the world to give people the opportunity to grow in wisdom, Christ-likeness, and grace. Go to gregmoore.com and become a partner today. Remember, you can order resources or partner with our ministry at gregmoore.com or by writing to us at P.O. Box 7702, Woodland Park, Colorado, 80863. We look forward to hearing from you today. Join us again tomorrow for more Wisdom for Living. And many others have written books on marriage and, and all these things are good, but I'll tell you, you know, Dr. Dobson doesn't know your child like, like God does. And Gary Chapman doesn't know your spouse like God does. And the Holy Spirit will show you what to do inside relationships. If you'll pray, if you listen to the Spirit, He'll show you how to minister love and life to your family. That's tomorrow on Wisdom for Living.